Hi, I'm Dr. Josh Matthews, and on this episode of What Makes This Movie Great, a very special movie that almost nobody knows about, but is a rival to Orson Welles' Citizen Kane in terms of excellence and complexity. It's the 1955 French film Lola Montez, coming up next. <laughs> Alright, so before I discuss this movie, Lola Montez, I want to pause and tell you a couple of key things. The fact that I'm doing this video should show you that I'm not in the YouTube game for subscribers, for views, for money or fame. I'm just interested in, one, getting out interesting information about movies I think are legitimately great. Two, I want to meet interesting people. And if you made it this far into the video, you're one of those interesting people that I'm interested in meeting and talking to so please comment on this now, i am going to put subscribe wording here i'm going to beg for subscribers only because as i said i want to meet interesting people and making a video about lola montez well that's not going to trigger the youtube algorithm it's only going to bring in those legitimately interested in movie education watching great movies finding more great movies so what's lola montez you ask it's a 1955 movie directed by the great german director Max Max Ophels, and at the time it was the most expensive French movie ever made. It's very lavish, and the production values mirror the internal themes of the movie which are about a circus performance a big grand show in the 19th century showing off a woman's life and being a lavish production meant for 19th century spectators within the movie the movie centers on lola montez of the title a french woman in the mid 19th century based on a real life person who had a very interesting life she was the mistress of franz liszt the famous composer she was in various revolutions and then in the movie the frame narrative is that is the beginning ending and some of the middle shows her in a circus in America having a great big lavish production that draws in a number of spectators the circus shows off her life and tells her life story the movie thus is two things one is the circus production two are the flashbacks to her life as she lived it the various scenes from her life the movie mixes together the flashbacks and the circus scenes and presents her life Life, sort of an order but sort of out of chronological order in that way the movie is like Citizen Kane where you see pictures and vignettes of Citizen Kane's life Charles Foster Kane but you don't get a chronological order and you get multiple different perspectives on the main figure here Lola Montez and you see her at first with Franz Liszt in the flashbacks her being with the German composer in the Italian countryside later you'll see her unhappily married but then she has an affair and then she deals with governmental and political intrigues basically Lola Montez is a woman who is confused and yet free Lola Montez is a woman who has an interesting social and biographical life she's with artists she's with politicians She's in show business, obviously. She was in some of the major historical events of the 19th century. And the movie shows this woman at once sort of torn between different areas or aspects of life and who's free to go wherever she wants and be with whomever she wants. The flashbacks in this movie are really interesting because you can take them to be accurate to history or they can be dreams or they can be visualizations of what the circus performance is showing the audience in the movie or they can be a mix of all three. Or whichever one of those you choose will lead you to different interpretations of this movie. It's highly ambiguous complex movie. I think one of the ideas is to show Lola as a proto-feminist figure in the 19th century. She's a free woman, free to be the mistress or wife of whomever she chooses and to move from man to man, from social circle to social circle freely. On the other hand, within the frame narrative of the movie, she's trapped within the circus environment, being made a public figure and a celebrity her life being turned into literally show business and that's not only melancholy that's kind of disturbing the ringmaster a circus leader played so wonderfully by peter ustinoff you just should watch this movie for his performance alone is fascinating and yet creepy because does he control lola is he the storyteller who's shaping her biography shaping it for an audience for his own purposes in order to sell tickets the answer may be yes and I say that Lola is a proto-feminist. You can certainly watch this movie from a feminist angle. 
I think you can watch it from an anti-feminist angle. That is, you see Lola move from man to man, from scene to scene in her life, and nothing seems to satisfy her desires. And that sort of life is fascinating for show business. It sells tickets, it's titillating and interesting for an audience, but it's not satisfying for the person who had to go through that sort of life. I think the movie condemns and praises a liberal lifestyle at once. It shows you the tensions in the modern world about a free individual but who's trapped or contained or constrained within historical events and also by show business by being someone who spectators focus on all our reality tv people youtube video people tiktok people you name it people crave attention today but they're sort of trapped or slaves to their audience and i think the movie really depicts lola as that sort of free yet trapped character and I'm comparing it to Citizen Kane because I think it was influenced by Kane, but also it's nearly as complex. And there is a weak argument to be made here that this is one of the best movies ever made and maybe as great, if not greater, than Kane itself. That all depends on whether you like what's happening in this story, its themes, and so on as compared to Citizen Kane's themes. But I have seen people on the internet trying to make the case that Lola Montez is one of the greatest movies ever. I will admit one more thing to you. I, with this movie, I did something I've never done before. I watched it, and then it was bothering me. I didn't like it very much, but there was something about it I thought maybe I missed. So I went back and watched it one week later. As I said, I've never done that before with a movie I didn't like very much. Watching it the second time, I finally saw all the complexity and ambiguity in it. It may be just one of those movies you need to watch a couple of times in order to sort of see what's going on in it. But I think if you're a first time viewer, focus on how the circus performance in America connects with and contrasts with the flashbacks to Lola Montez's life. And ask yourself, what is this movie saying about celebrities who are being watched or people are paying to see performances of them at somehow. Can the life of a person be boiled down to or made into a consumer object meant for consumption? Isn't that a tragedy that someone's life like Lola Montez is turned into something for spectators to pay money for. And I love the ending of this movie. Wonderful ending. It may be all a dream. It may be real. But you see, oh, I can't even talk about it with you. You'll, I'll spoil it for you. Talk about it in the comments, the ending, which is just a great final shot. This movie has a great opening shot too. But then what happens in the end? Okay, so let's talk about it in the comments. Anyway, I highly recommend this movie to those of you who love movies. Lola Montez, go watch it. Thanks for watching my channel. Please subscribe. Please talk to me in the comments or messaging. I really appreciate anything you send to me. Thanks and have a great day.